Good morning, everybody. It's about 1047 this Wednesday morning, May 18th. You know, this morning, it's already been kind of eventful for me. You see, this morning, I recently tried to re-register on a certain form that I've talked about many times here. And it looks like for one post, I was successful. But then after that one post, I got banned again. And my IP address was banned from that um, message board for band jumping. I think you guys all know the site I'm talking about. It's um, basically owned by the head writer of the Sonic comic series. Now I can understand why he did this. You know, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not upset about it, folks, because I had a feeling it might happen. But here's the truth. He may be able to ban me because of my IP address. But he can't ban me if I have a different IP address. That's all I'm going to say about that. But speaking of Sonic, you know, for the past two days, a lot of people have been talking about the whole 225 deal. You know, a lot of people have been saying on various websites that inform informs that, you know, they... You know, a lot of them are saying that Eggman now, some of them are saying Eggman now is the, a badass again. They say he's finally a badass. Well, it's not the first time Eggman has been looked at as a badass, if you will. As a matter of fact, there's numerous times. 175. Um, there's been 175 he was looked at as a badass. The triple threat deal after Sonic came back from being in space. You know, uh, there's been a few other times, folks. Even 75 when he was introduced. So, it's not the first time he's been a badass. Yes, it is the first time that he's ever, that the writers, doesn't matter if it's Ian or it's been Ken or whoever, it, it is the first time that r the writers have put him in a position to where he's so badass that he wants to, and so determined to get what he wants, that he's determined to wipe out everybody. Now, I will say this: I'm I'm not a, you know, I'm not a psychic or anything, and I can't predict the, predict what's going to happen after Genesis. Although, like I've said in some of my posts, I pretty much have an idea sometimes of what it could occur or what's going to occur, just like some others. But I will say this, folks: enjoy the badassness of Eggman for a while, because after Genesis and going into two thirty. We either our favorite princess or some people or some fans favorite princess is alive or not or severely wounded or not. I will say this the badassness of Eggman is gonna probably come to an end. Cause I said this briefly at the end of my uh, of, of my uh, video uh yesterday and I'm pretty sure a lot of the people that didn't watch it. They didn't want to be spoiled. Well, I will say this. They can watch this now because I'm pretty sure they all know what's going on. By now they do. And if they don't, that's fine. You know, it's okay. But let me just say this. Let me just say this. Um, we've had Eggman be a badass for a while. And then he's stopped being a badass. And... You know, he's gone to being a weak, being weak, being nothing but a joke. And in fact, the last time he was badass and lost, which we all know is going to happen again, he went insane. So expect another trip to Insanityville, folks. Expect another trip to Insanityville. And don't just expect a trip to Insanityville and place in a holding cell in New Mobile Tropolis if it's still around. No, no, don't expect that, folks. Expect something completely different. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You see, at the end of Son at the end of Sonic Universe 28, we saw the Zone Cops driving in with a new pickup of of inmates, of prisoners, that were going to join Scourge in his. That were going to join Scourge. We pretty much have an idea who those are. But they did acknowledge that something was happening on Mobius Prime. 
So don't think for, for a second we won't have any Zonic Zone Cop action before the before the year before the um, we get back to normal around here. And don't ex don't be surprised if we have a little bit, like I mentioned at the end of my video yesterday, some appearances by Feist. Because what did Eggman do that pissed Feist off? He cheated. Now, yeah, Feist is all for cheating, but not against him. So I want you to keep this in mind, folks. The aftermath of 225 and the aftermath of Genesis, from my opinion, my standpoint as a fan, my opinion, which I could be wrong about, but my standpoint as a fan, I feel we're going to get appearances by Feist and the Zone Cops. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, the Zone Cops shouldn't have no effect on this. Wrong. They will have an effect. Because you see, for four issues throughout the summer, we've got two separate comics in two separate ways. Genesis and Sonic Universe. After those four issues, we get back to the status quo. So it makes sense that by the time we get to the next issue, now we get to 230, which ironically should be issue 33, or 34, actually, issue 34 of Sonic Universe, that something's going to happen. I don't know what it is, and I can't really say if it is going to happen or not, but something's going to happen. Now, Ian has come out and... Ian has come out and said that, you know, he's hinted around that after Genesis and things get back to status quo, that the story arc that will follow is going to be double the length of the Iron Dominion. Well, whether that is true or not, I will say this. I will say this. Whether it's after Genesis or whether it's gone all the way up to 250 or in between, now in 250 expect like i said eggman to hit another take another trip to insanityville all right expect that expect it majorly folks and like i said don't expect him to be put and like i said earlier don't expect him to be imprisoned in a holding cell wherever the freedom fighters and the mobians are going to live in no expect him to probably be put in a zone cop holding cell like scourge is that's right. I've got a feeling that's where Eggman could end up next. Or he can end up as a prisoner of Feist. Or Fest. Or whatever you want to call it. Ugh, that's good coffee. Now. On to another thing that involves here in 225. I mentioned this yesterday and I'll mention it again. Princess Sally. Now, the last thing we saw of Sally was her broken goggles. Now, according to some, when you look at a panel, the far room, the panel where the far room's at, you see this shadowy figure. We don't know, honestly, what that is. Some have already come out and said that could be Sally. That could be Sally dead. Some have come out and said that could be Sally severely wounded. But we don't know that. It's like I recently said this morning. It's 50-50 right now and everything's still up in the air. So we really don't know. I mean, Sam Cybercat or whatever her name is at Bumble King Forms before I got banned again. Said that she agreed with what I said. I've had various other people agree with what I've said. And some of these other people have said similar things. One person, I believe, at the Bumble King forums and at some other sites, have pretty much figured out, or it could be elsewhere, but have pretty much given eight reasons as to why Sally could probably survive. Some have given the obvious reason that she could duck, and, it would, and the bullets would, def would hit the goggles instead. And that's really, that would make some sense there too, folks. She just ducks, the goggles fall, fly off her head, they get shot at, she stays down, 
around for a while until the thing stops firing. One of the other possibilities, folks, one of the other possibilities is they, which is really interesting, and one um, poster, or one member of the forum, where this was mentioned, said that it's really interesting, and it's actually kind of could do some character development with this. And the other possibility for her survival is Nicole can turn her into a hologram. I know that doesn't make sense, but it's true. I know you're thinking to yourself, well, how can she make a hologram out of Sally? It's real simple. Nicole has gotten stronger in some way, so maybe she can use her power to kind of pull Sally into the handheld deal and then flash out a hologram of her in her place. It's obvious, you know, that could happen. Some are saying, another possibility is some, that they brought up is she could be mortally, is severely wounded, but rushed out of the egg dome, as, the death egg, as fast as she can be, to so she can recover. That's another possibility, folks. But again, it's up in the air. Some have even said, this person even said that Nicole could kind of, physically, ability-wise, jump in front of her and take the bullets for her in her computer form. That could happen too, folks. But again, like I've said, it's up in the air, it's 50-50. We really don't know. Now, there are some fellow subscribers and readers like myself that said, look, if she dies, you know, okay, it's going to be sad, you know, that she'll be gone, but you know what, we got to move on. And the way I look at it, folks, is like this. I mentioned this in a video. You'll probably see that video later. But basically, if Sally does die in the comic, she's not completely dead, folks. She's not. And you know why she's not completely dead? It's because we still have her alive on DVD in the Sad AM series. And when you think about it, there could be fans out there already planning out to do a webcomic similar to what they did for the Lost Season 3 of Sad AM, doing webcomics of what they feel the comic should be like with Sally still in there. That could happen, folks. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're planning stages, planning that right now, just in case. But folks, it's like I told Richard Kunta in my response to him yesterday, and I said this in the video, in the audio video, that is. I said this yesterday, folks, and I'll repeat it. Sally's not the only character affected by this, all right? She's not the only character. You got to remember, when, when Eggman did what he did with his Operation Clean Sweep, he didn't just possibly kill Sally off. He killed all the characters involved with the comic book. I'm talking characters like, even the game characters, folks. Characters like Tails. Characters like Amy. Knuckles. Shadow. Rouge. Cream. Vanilla. The Chaotix. Any character that's been involved in a game released by Sega, in that one press of a button, he killed off. You got to remember that, folks. And that's why this one user or one uh, YouTuber told me in a comment that Ian was surprised from what they heard that Sega allowed him to do this. They gave the approval. So it wasn't them giving the approval of saying, okay, put Sally's life on the line. No, it was basically the approval of saying, hey, it's okay, go ahead, wipe them out. Folks, all I can say is this. Right now, we totally don't know about Sally's situation. We're unsure of what we're going to see in Genesis, although we know that certain characters we know of are still there. And second, and thirdly of all, we don't know what the outcome's going to be when we go in October, come October, with 2.30. We don't know what the outcome's going to be, folks. But it's like I said, 
in my fo- in at the Sega forums, and like I said, at Saturday morning Sonic forums and Saturday M Sonic forums and the Sonic Stadium, I believe. I haven't. I don't know if I did there yet or not, but I probably will. But it's like I said, folks, at the various three forums that I mentioned: Sega, Saturday morning Sonic, and Saturday M Sonic. It's like I said. Right now, what Ian has done is he's left us on a cliffhanger. In fact, one person here on YouTube called Bacon Lover, I can't think of the rest of it, I think it's just Bacon Lover, agreed with what I said. And they said, Ed, that a similar situation happened on the NBC series Chuck. And, it, and the fact that it, too, ended in a cliffhanger. And again, I'll use examples like I used yesterday in my other audio video. George Lopez ended in a cliffhanger. Cheers, one of their season finales ended in a cliffhanger. I think Growing Pains has done it. You know, various comedy sitcoms, you know, cop dramas, if you will, whatever you want to call them, sci-fi shows and stuff, have all ended in cliffhangers, and those cliffhangers were resolved the following season. And again, folks, getting back to what I said yesterday, and again, you could watch this video now if you want to, if you didn't watch it yesterday. But getting back to what I said, Harry Potter and the Twilight, the Harry Potter movies right now, as well as the upcoming Twilight films, are the same way. I mean, they ended the first part of Harry Potter, the, they ended the first part of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows on a cliffhanger. And they're going to finish it up in the next month or so with part two. Twilight is heading in that same direction, I believe, this year. Maybe. I'm not really sure. But they're heading very soon this year or next year in that same direction. But they're going to, ex- they're going to expand it. They're going to extend it longer than the Harry Potter ones. And how? They're going to do it by, and how are they going to do this? They're going to do it by a year, folks. By a year. They're going to extend it. They're going to do it by a year, folks. And it's like I said, you know, it may not be the longest time we've been left on a cliffhanger. The X-Men series, the original X-Men trilogy, the second movie ended on a cliffhanger because we saw that silhouette, silhouette, if you will, that yellow silhouette of the phoenix bird, of the phoenix bird in the water, in that, in that lake. You know, even James Wolfe, the angry video game nerd, James Wolfe even said when he did his Ninja Turtles retrospective yesterday when he concluded it, he said in there, he said that season seven sort of ended on a cliffhanger because Shredder and Krang escaped but without the Technodrome, so it left the door open, if you will, for a cliffhanger. So again... So again, that's what this is like. And comic books, like I said, like I mentioned yesterday, are no different. Novels are no different. And when you take a look at some of the movie series out there, like I mentioned with Harry Potter and the upcoming Twilight films, you take a look at some of the most recent ones, like Scream. Like Scream, for goodness sakes, folks. From what I understand, every Scream has ended sort of with a cliffhanger. Final Destination, same thing. Even some of the old uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies have ended on cliffhangers, I believe. I could be wrong, folks. Heck, you know what? You want to, you want, folks, if you want a really good example about this, you really want a good example about this, folks? You want a good example about this, folks? I'll tell you a good example about this. I'll tell you a good example. A good example, folks, that's really not a movie or a comedic sitcom or or drama or anything like that. I'll give you a good example. ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling, the original ECW. This, I was reading the book. 
I was reading the book, the no, the uh, novel that they have, The Rise and Fall of ECW. That so is, is the that is the companion piece to the DVD. And I read it. And according to what Paul Heyman said in there, and I think Tommy Dreamer said the same thing, the whole thing between Beulah and Kimona, if you will, I think that's what her name was. The sit one of the episodes they ended they ended one of their episodes on a cliffhanger. With a to be continued, sort of a cliffhanger. So you really didn't know what was going on. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know if they were going to have a cap fight or what? You didn't know. But you see, that's that's what a cliffhanger is about, folks. It leaves your jaw wide open. It makes you wonder. It makes you think, what could be next? And again, it's like I said in this video, if you have some kind of a story arc during the summer that sort of ties things together, between twenty five between the cliffhanger issue and the issue that will hopefully resolve things, whether we have a character dead or not. You know, if said story arc summer you know, if said summer story arc, you know, d you know, is you know, has answers and everything, we will get them. But the truth is if not, then I don't know. But folks, the truth of the matter is right now, it's a guessing game. It's a guessing game, folks. And those that become too close to the truth, I will say this. I respect what Ian has done, whether we like it or not. I respect the fact that he's come, he's come as far as he did from a fan that did a webcomic like Other Am to where he is now. And again, we may not like what he, some of the things he's done, but I respect what he, where he's come from. But I will say this. If you're on his form, be careful what you say because it might just get you banned. And you know why it might get you banned? Because, folks, Ian is the kind of head writer of a comic book that doesn't want things spoiled, doesn't want people getting close to the truth. You know what I said? You know what I said in my most recent post? And I said this in the video yesterday, and I'll say it again, and I've said this numerous times. When Ian, as far as I know, as far as I've seen, as far as I know, ever since Ian's been on the book, ever since Ian's been on the book as the head writer, he has never killed a major or minor character off panel or off screen. The way he's done it is he's killed a major or minor character. The way he's done it, he's done it up front and in your face, on panel, on screen. And there are times that he's done it in a heroic, sacrificial way. That's how he's done it, folks. So there's no way he would take, so there's no way, in my opinion, he would take a character as many people have pointed out, and hell, Ian has even said it himself. Ian has said that he's going. he looks at all the message boards out there that are Sonic related that talk about the comic book. He's probably looked at a lot of the clubs and, you know, and the clubs and, and forms and stuff like that at, at DevonArt, DevonArt.com, which revolve around Sonic and Sally and the comic book and Sat AM. You know what I'm saying? He's looked around there. Like I mentioned, he said he's looked around all the other message boards. And the truth is, folks, he realizes how popular she, she is. But the, tr but the question is, even though he realizes how popular she is, will he have the guts to pull the trigger? You see, we don't know. You see, Ken Penders, hey, you know, dislike the guy or not, he had the guts to pull the trigger, but he had to you know, kind of re kind of go back and reload, if you will, or get the bullets and put those bullets that he fired out of the gun, put them back in the gun because he was told not to do it. And Ian, like I said, being a fan that he once was, pretty much has an idea how popular she is, but will he do it? 
You see, everything is left up in the air. Everything is left up in the air, folks. So we really don't know. But again, it's like I said. As far as I know, and you can agree with this or not, anytime he's killed a character, major or minor, he's done it on panel, in your face, in a heroic, sacrificial way. Now, another thing... Now, speaking of that, a lot of people feel that, feel that if Sally's dead, that what Ian probably could end up doing is pull what is known as a Disney death. Okay, first of all, I've mentioned this before. Other people have mentioned it. Ian stated in his Newsarama interview that he did that it's not death, but it's life hanging in the balance. So we really can't say death, can we? I mean, I know there's a lot of Sally haters out there, a lot of Sonic Amy fans out there that are like, Yay! She's dead! The princess is dead! Yay! Folks, you can't celebrate just yet. I said this yesterday. You can't celebrate just yet until we find out whether it's true or not. And again, if it is true, yeah, it'll be sad, but you got to move on. And just because she might be dead in one medium that's based on the franchise doesn't mean she's dead in another. I mean, I'm looking right now at my Sad AM complete series box set, and I can tell you this, folks. She's still alive in there. So she'll still be alive in the fan base, whether people like it or not. So, and again, so going back to what I'm saying, again, Ian looks at that. He looks at the Sad AM Forever Club he, uh, at Devonard. He looks at the Sonic Sally Clubs at Devonard. I mean, honestly. And then he looks at forums like at probably, he probably looks at forums at places like Sad AM Sonic, Saturday Morning Sonic, Not Whole Village at the MobiusForum.net, which I've seen him visit on frequent occasions, along with Paul Kamins Kalminski. You know, he's probably gone to the Sega forums, Sonic Stadium forums, and you do not think he sees the majority of fans out there that, you know, they don't want, that even though they may not like her, they don't want to see her dead, and those that do like her, they don't want to see her dead. Do you not see, think he sees all that? People, what he's doing is he's, he's got you by the tie. He's got you by the leash right now, and he's dragging you, and for the next four months he's going to drag you and me and everybody else along for the ride until we get to 2.30. And once we get there, whether we get answers in Genesis or not, Ian's going to have fun, have a fun time I'm doing all that. He's going to have a fun time just dragging you along with that leash. He's going to have that leash on you with a collar and he's going to just love dragging you along for the ride. And believe me, and believe me, folks, you could try everything in your power. You could try everything in your power to try and get him to tell you when you meet him at a convention, whether it's the Summer of Sonic convention, whether it's the San Diego Comic Con, whether it's E3. But you could do everything in your power this summer um, during convention season to get him to talk and tell you what exactly is going to happen or get somebody close to him to talk and tell you what exactly is going to happen. But do as you may, folks. Whether you like the way he writes, whether you like the fact that he'll ban you from his side or not for getting too close to the truth. The fact is, folks, he's, not go he's the kind of person that's not going to open his lips. He'll answer questions He'll probably ask answer the question as why he came up to us, came up with the story so f suddenly. Folks, the truth is he's not going to move an inch. He's not going to budge an inch. And all I can say is, God, all I can say is, God, I hope Richard Kunta, the man that's trying to get the animated Sonic fan film of his on, up and going. I hope 
to God, he goes to one of these conventions and looks Ian straight in the face and flat out asks him why he's doing what he's doing. Because I hope Ian looks him straight in the face and asks him why he did what he did. I can't, I just hope to pray in God that might happen. It may not, but we never know. But I will say this, folks. Again, we cannot truly say what's going to happen just yet. We cannot point out to a shadowy figure in a hallway on a panel and assume that's a dead body or a severely wounded body. We cannot assume that, folks. But what we can, but what we can say and predict and give our opinions on is this. What we can say, predict, and give our opinions on is this. After it's all said and done, whether the princess is alive or not, we can say this. Our main villain's badassness won't last forever. And he'll possibly go back down to that and go back down for another trip and stay in Insanityville. And he'll probably end up not just in maximum prison, but in a maximum prison cell, not in not on Mobius Prime, but possibly where Scourge is. Because believe me, I think if the Zone Cop has any role in this in the next few months after this Genesis deal and the Scourge story arc is done, I think the Zone Cop is going to come to if Ian does play put the zone cop in a role here the zone cop's going to be like you know what sonic was right i should have gotten robo robotnik which who eggman is i should have gotten him out of that world and put him back in his yeah his may be an empty wasteland he may not have nothing to rule over but you know what put him back there and i guarantee you that well, I'm not guarantee you that may happen, but all I can say is if Ian does that, it would be a shocker. But I will say this. My opinion and everything, Feist, Fest, whatever you want to call him, is going to play a role after it's all said and done in this summer. So, and you know what? In closing, if Genesis has anything to do with this whole situation, a lot of people are predicting that the characters st may start remembering certain things throughout the run. And you know what? If they do remember that, you know, they used to have previous lives. And if they do end up remembering what has happened before, before in flashbacks and dreams, then you know what? It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge, folks. And that's all I could say about that. So, that's it for now. Those are just my thoughts, my discussion and thoughts on Sonic 225 and afterwards. Give me your thoughts below, folks. Comment down below. I'll talk to you all later.